This is the AT Tiny 167. This is a powerful little microcontroller. It has 20 pins, uh, 16 kilobytes of flash memory. And so it's really good if you want a small project, but also you need to do quite a bit of code for that project. Now this is Arduino compatible if you can get it set up correctly. And uh, that's what I want to do in this video. Previous video, I got this thing set up so you can program it from Linux. And someone was wondering if I could do a video to get this set up on Windows. And I needed to get this set up on Windows myself, and so I thought that I would just make a quick video on it. Behind me here, I have a breadboard. Now this adapter, you can put on an ATtiny 167 inside of there. It kind of clamps down. You can push this and it opens and closes. So you can place that in there to program it. And then it just connects up to the breadboard. This is a SOP28 dip 28-0.65 and I'll try to find this product to put in the description. We're going to be using another Arduino in order to program it. We're using Arduino as ISP to program it. So this will be connected something like you know this and we'll have the wiring diagram and everything uh, so that you can use this to program that. Yeah so let's get that set up. So in order to use the Arduino Uno as a programmer, you need to actually upload code to the Arduino Uno itself before you use it as a programmer. So go into File, Examples, and then Arduino ISP, and press on the Arduino ISP program. Now this will turn your Arduino Uno or whatever you're using into a programmer. So go into Tools, make sure Arduino Uno is selected, COM port selected and everything, uh, change this to the normal programming method, and then go into upload. So here's the actual programming setup for the ATtiny167. In this case it's using an Arduino Uno. Could use a different board uh, to program it. For example the Duum Eleve, which is what I'm going to be using. The pin setup is basically identical for that. For other ones you're going to need to make sure that you match uh, with the right pin and I'll talk about that later. Now first of all basically we have power connected which is the 5 volt and ground connected up to the 167 and then we have a reset to ground capacitor, a 1 to 10 microfarad capacitor, and uh, this ensures that the Arduino doesn't reset while it's programming. So these are the programming pins themselves. So pin 13, the main thing is that it's going to SCK, and for 12, the main thing is that it's going to MISO, master and slave out, for 11, the main thing is that it's going to MOSI, master out, slave in. For 10, the main thing is that it's going to reset. Um, so when I say we need to match the pins, basically this is what I'm talking about. If you look Arduino Uno itself, you can see that like pin 13 is SCK, pin 12 is MISO, and that's what we're doing. We're matching those. So you need to make sure that you match those with both the chips. Now in addition to those programming pins, there's also LEDs here. These are optional, but they uh, help so you know what's going on when programming it. So for example, pin 9, which is right here, it's a heartbeat showing that the programmer is running. Pin 8 is an error light. Pin 7 is when, whenever it's programming it. And I'll leave a link to these in the description. For the 1UF capacitor, you'll know that uh, this lead is negative because of the line on the side of the capacitor. And so for the one that connects from reset to ground, you'll want the positive pin on reset and the negative pin on ground. If you get everything wired correctly and you have the programming lights set up as well, Whenever you plug it into your computer, you should see something like this. And make note of these lights that blink, and then you have the heartbeat to indicate that the programmer is working. To begin with adding support for the ATtiny167 with Arduino, uh, we first have to add it as a board on the Arduino software. And so there's this JSON file, and I'll leave this in the description. And what you do is you copy the link, you go into the Arduino software, go into File, Preferences, inside of Additional Boards Manager URLs, just paste that in and say OK. Now that you've added that JSON file, go into Tools, and then Boards, and then Board Manager. And then it's going to download 
platforms index and then go into contributed there's a pull down box and then contributed and so we're going to go ahead and install the at tiny core so the pull down just press install and then it says installation complete so now that we have the board installed there are also a few more things that we need to do for example we don't have the right bootloader on the at tiny 167 there's the stock bootloader that comes with it which isn't Arduino compatible and what we need to do is make sure that this bootloader uses the internal clock instead of an external clock you're not going to be able to burn this bootloader it will burn a bootloader but it will be the bootloader that uses the external clock and so you need to add an external clock to the the setup in order to be able to program it and if you burn the bootloader now uh, with this bootloader you're going to have to add an external clock before you can even get the the uh, chip to be working again you won't even be able to burn a different bootloader until you add the clock and so what we need to do is manually upload a bootloader and the first thing we need to do now I ran this blink program and you can see it says attiny167 not found in order to fix this there's this uh, github message board here this was posted a while back but you need to add this to the avrdude.com leave this link in the description but you, what you want to do is copy this whole whole area and just say copy so what we need to do is open up wordpad but we need to run it as administrator so right click on it and choose run as administrator and then we go into file open first of all make sure that instead of all word wordpad documents change that to all documents and then go into this pc go into your c drive Go into Program Files x86, Arduino, Hardware, and then Tools, and then AVR, and then ETC, and you'll find avrdude.conf. What you want to do is scroll all the way down to the bottom, and this is where it defines all the different boards. So you can see like ATmega 384D3. So we're going to go down here and we're going to paste that which we found on GitHub into this document. And then it will have the ATtiny167 and the ATtiny87 in here. So I tried to upload the Blink program again, and I got the same problem, even though I added it into avrdude.com. So I'm gonna try this folder here in the etc avrdude.conf I'm going to open this uh, with wordpad you can open without permission what I'm going to do is add those lines also to the end of this so copy this from the github and just paste it at the very end and then press save and now we're going to be burning the bootloader to the attiny167 that is compatible and so from here I'll leave the, the, the link in the description once again. What you want to download is the empty167.hex. And go into raw, and then go right click, and then save as. To start out, let's just put it in our, our downloads. Go into your downloads. Um, it's not a D .txt. So if you want, we can remove this extension, because it's .hex. Well, we're going to need to move this where the AVR dude binary is. So we're going to copy this file. We're going to go into the C drive again. C, our program files x86, Arduino, hardware, tools, AVR, and then bin. And in here we have the AVR dude binary right here. AVR dude. So let's just go ahead and so I'm just going to right click, choose paste, press continue, and it is copied into here. Now we need to open this directory so we can copy the location and we're going to go into the command prompt. I'm going to use PowerShell because it's better. And we're going to CD and then we're going to put this destination in quotes. 
and then press enter. And then now we're going to run this command. Make sure you don't get the last character in this. So you want to copy like this. If you get the last character after it, it's going to run the command automatically because it's an inner character. What we want to do is make sure that the COM port is the right COM port. So if you go into the Arduino thing, and you go to tools, you'll see we're using COM4, not COM3. So what we want to do is change that to COM4. Make sure everything's good, just press enter. And here you can see that it has successfully written the bootloader. That was a long process, but we finally got it all configured correctly. So now we can run the Blink program. Go into File, Examples, Basics, and then Blink. And this is the program uh, that we can just test to make sure it's working. Now in this schematic, I showed uh, that there is a, an LED right here. It's an extra LED. Uh, for the blinking program. So that goes on pin 13. Now when we're working on uh, the when we look at the blink program you can see it uses LED built-in that's the wrong uh, pin and so what we really want to use is pin 13 here. Now when we're configuring pins to you in Arduino uh, like 13 doesn't necessarily relate to pin 13. Uh, for example pin 14, if you write that in code, that would actually be pointing to pin 12 here. And so what you really want to look at is the PC int. So you can see PC int, it's 14, PC int 13. So PC int 13, you can see that's 13. And so we use 13 in the code. So instead of LED built in, we'll have it 13. Just change that for all of them. And then we can go ahead and upload this. Now make sure that in tools that you have the board as ATtiny167 with no bootloader. Don't choose OpiBoot1. And then chip is ATtiny167 and then choose the COM port and all of that. I usually do sketch upload using programmer. Here you can see that the LED is blinking. So we have successfully programmed the ATtiny167. I hope this video helps. In a previous video um, where I talked about this for Linux, you might find some things useful. Uh, for example, if you're using Wire, uh, the Wire library, which uh, does things for SDA and SCL output, you're going to need something called TinyWire, and you're going to need to install that library. And so if you want to check out that previous video I did, at the end of the video, I talk about all that type of stuff. For example, here's one thing that we did in the previous video. Uh, we've got a NeoPixel ring running, and this is all running off the ATtiny167. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day.